Mr. President, dear hosts, uh, guests, friends, it is a great pleasure for me to introduce the work that we do on an everyday basis at the University of Tartu, uh, where I work as a senior researcher. We have established jointly with the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Communications and the University of Tartu a center that is called uh, CITES, Center of IT Impact Studies, which takes in the naturally generated data by state institutions, the large-scale data sets, and tries to estimate, use these data, and estimate the fiscal impact of e-governance, a tangible, quantified format uh, of, of impact assessment. But more, more, moreover, what we do in our everyday work as we get to work with these super unique and uh, and population level, uh, large scale data sets, um, we encounter situations where it's not only the impact that we are after, but we actually see the opportunities by how you could bring the different data sets together and prototype and build services, what we call ne the next generation of e-services, and, and, um, and how you could, by doing that, um, accelerate um, innovation. So um, my talk is going to be primarily about impact assessment, uh, but I'm going to also cover a little bit about why e-government is so pivotal in terms of accelerating innovation. Now, before going uh, into the details, um, here's a, a schematic picture of uh, the, da the data exchange layer that President Ilves was talking about earlier. It's basically a protocol that binds together all the different state institutions, their repositories, and upon which the entire ecosystem is actually able to work. There are several preconditions to that. Some of them were mentioned, like digital ID and so on. Um, but this is really the core of the Estonian e-governance ecosystem. And we have used, we, uh, the X-Road is administered by the State Information System Authority, and since the 2002, which is, well, for all intents and purposes, I think the, the, uh, the birthday of Estonian e-governance, since then really things started to uh, emerge and, uh, and flourish. Um, we have logged data through the traffic that has gone through the uh, X road. And that amounts to about 90, 95% of all the traffic that happens in the entire ecosystem. And I thought maybe we start with getting a few anchoring points uh, in place. When, what is it what we mean when we talk about Estonian e-governance? So, on the left, what you see is the amount of interactions, we call them queries, amount of interactions that take place, that have ever taken place in the entire ecosystem of Estonian e-governance since 2003 up until to 2015, measured in millions. And this is really the, it's only you can think about the interactions or, or, or queries as it's more in technical terms, but this is really the bloodstream of the ecosystem. And it amounts to about uh, almost 600 million in 2015. About two-thirds of those are machine-to-machine mach machine -machine interactions, where a um, program checks whether there is a new license, license plate, for example, in the vehicle registry. Is there another one? No. Is there now a new one? So that all amounts to a kind of builds to queries. About one-third is estimated to be between humans, which really then goes into the heart of the impact assessment. But we can talk about this. Uh, a bit later. And here you see in nominal, in absolute numbers, the amount of services, e-services that are available in Estonia, those amount to about 1,600 by now. Uh, the amount of institutions that render their services in online fashion. And the amount of, this, this green line here, the amount of data repositories. Now this is really important, because you only can build an ecosystem when you bring your data online. So you can see how much traffic can generate actually not that many data sets or data repositories. We're talking about 200 in 2015. 
Of course, those are not those small-scale little uh, data sets. We're talking about the population register type of registers that are really enabling in their nature. The Okay, there we go. The rate at which the amount of queries have grown annually is about 45 million a year. This really doesn't work very well. Uh, the amount of services, about 123 services per year. About uh, 73 institutions have joined XROAD. On average, per year, about and about 14 data repositories have joined XROAD over time. So these are average growth numbers. This tells you something about the pace of the, evolu uh, of the evolution of, of Estonian e-governance. So let's see what happens in the next three years. Where are we going? Somebody mentioned my fanciness for equations. If we disaggregate the amount of queries, not by year, but by a month, then it turns out that a very, very simple equation actually um, describes this initially a very small kind of linear growth which then turns into exponential one. And if you extrapolate to, the, to this to future, then we know that in 2015 we had about uh, 600 million queries. Then the amount of those queries, guys, this doesn't work very well. Am I doing something wrong? What? So it, it, sorry? Do I have to point it in the direction? Oh, sorry. Oh, you're there. Okay. So in three year times, if to extrapolate this into the future, what, what will happen to the entire uh, ecosystem is going gonna, is gonna to go from its current about half a billion. In the next three years, it's going to double to about one, uh, one billion. How about, where are you guys? Okay, how about e-services? So the growth of e-services, funnily enough, is not exponential. It's completely fully linear, as you see, uh, as you see here. And if you extrapolate this to uh, uh, three years, we're going to go from our current 1,600 to about uh, 2000, more than 2,000 services uh, by 2019. Regarding institutions, this is really interesting. You see those little kind of step functional um, shapes to it. It turns out that institutions don't voluntarily start participating in building the governance. They need incentives and strong incentives. This is what you see. This is the empirical evidence of how the incentives that policymakers put in place actually work. And if you, if you extrapolate this further, you'll see that we go from our current about 900 institutions to about uh, 1,200 uh, in the next three years. So, to sum it up, what we see is going gonna, is gonna to be in, three, in the next three years, we're going to double the amount of uh, uh, queries uh, from our current value to 1 billion, and we see linear growth for services institutions and data repositories. So whenever somebody tells you, and this goes particularly to our, this critique goes to particularly to um, Estonian uh, skeptics. Whenever somebody tells you that eTiger has fallen asleep, then use these data. I'm happy to share the slides. There is completely no evidence that the that the current development uh, has uh, stolen. So now to the impact, and I give you a very kind of rudimentary uh, picture of, uh, not a very good one, but kind of uh, that everybody can do on a, on a napkin. So Im imagine you take the, um, the amount of queries, which amounts to about 600 million uh, as of now, and remember I told you that about one-third of those, one-third of those queries are human to human. Two-thirds are machine to machine. This line shows you the accumulated one. So, assume that every interaction here saves about 15 minutes of time for both individuals interacting, me as a citizen and the government official. Me, I don't know, 
filing my taxes or asking for uh, what kind of permit, I don't know, something like that. On average, 15 minutes, finding some, you know, tracking down the, the phone number and so on, going to the office, 15 minutes is quite conservative. If that is true, then based on those numbers, in 2015, this is the amount of hours we saved, which amounts to about more than 5,000 years. If you have difficulties in getting your head around that figure, it means when it's about the same when 5,000 people work continuously for one year. So this is the kind of indication of, of the amount of time that was saved based on those uh, calculations. Of course, it's a very simplistic uh, way of approaching impact, and this is not what, what we are doing at CITIES. Um, on an everyday basis. What we're now working with or uh, on is the data that is generated by X-Road. It's a large scale data set. We have about 2.5 billion rows in the data. So this is huge. What we are doing is we are locating now the most frequently used services, which are most frequently used. We try to understand what is the actual business process behind it. Because they're hugely, like e-prescription, for example, it's a hugely multi-party, multi-process, uh, simultaneous process, business process, basically. So we need to figure out how it works in a traditional way. Then we have to construct a counterfactual. What would happen if we did not have the government? For example, what is the impact of internet voting in Estonia? You, you know, the better assess best assessment for it would be to compare it with and without internet voting, which is very difficult to achieve, of course. And then we estimate the quantitative uh, differences. We also get into really interesting empirical findings on the relations, how the amount of uh, uh, queries within the entire ecosystem relates to those nuclear entities, the data repositories. And again, you see that nothing happens if, if, if data repositories start kind of coming in, joining extra. Nothing happens until what? The 50th, maybe even 60th, uh, data repositories. So you think you are already building an ecosystem, but nothing happens. And this is really, I think, important for, for countries looking to implement e-governance uh, in real life. It takes time. It takes a lot of time, and as you see, it only maybe from the 60th or 80th um, uh, data repository that is added to the ecosystem, when the growth curves st start to rapidly change uh, its pace. So this is, um, this is something that we are um, currently doing and we can talk about later about the kinds of services that on the basis of those data we can prototype. And it, it's, it's just amazing what are the opportunities given the data, the real-time population scale data that we have Currently, though, in different silos, but if you manage to cut through the legislative process, kind of legislation and, um, and legal issues and put them together and start building services that are not descriptive in nature, but predictive in nature. So I think we have huge opportunities here. Thank you very much. <laughs>